Hello, I'm Shelley Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at the Cube Research. Welcome to this special Cube conversation, which is part of the AWS Financial Services Partner Series. The topic today is key themes in payments um, and what is happening across the industry, especially in terms of payment platform modernization. We're going to explore how reliability and scalability are helping drive innovation in the payment space. We're going to laser in on how Stripe is leveraging AWS to transform payments for enterprises and beyond. And we're going to talk through some industry use cases, including a look at automotive, retail, and FSI to help show sort of some examples of this transformation in action. Today, I am thrilled to be joined by Mark Smith, who's the head of payments, business, and market development for AWS, and Akash Sani the head of product for Stripe Connect. Welcome, gentlemen. It's great to have you. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for having us. So we're going to kick off this morning's conversation by talking a little bit about key themes in payments. Mark, I want to kick that off with you and see if I can talk you into kind of walking us through some of the key themes you and the team at AWS are seeing in the markets with your customers and so on as it relates to payments. Yeah, sure. and. Uh... I'm fortunate enough to talk to customers uh, every single day, and uh, we hear a lot of themes uh, with those payment customers and payment partners, but the the overarching theme that we're hearing these days is all around payments modernization. Whether we're talking to a payment company that's been around for decades uh, or centuries even, or a fintech that just started up 10, 15 years ago, uh, we work really closely with those payment customers and partners to make sure that you know, they're not only building for today, but also building for tomorrow. And a lot of times that means just working backwards from what their customers want. So um, clearly they their customers, whether they be a consumer, a small business or enterprise, they want faster payments, more secure payments, and more and more they want customized or personalized payments as well. Um, so the biggest theme we have with customers is how do they envision those fast, secure, customized products or applications for their customers where they want to be, right? And then yeah. continuing to innovate and iterate on those using the data that they've picked up along the way to continue to please those customers. So modernization, modernization, modernization is the theme that we're hearing uh, more and more. Yeah. Well, and I think it's really, it, it all boils down to think about our own customer behavior, right? That's what all of us want. We want it to be fast. We want it to be easy. We want it to be personalized. You know, all of those things are expectations that we come into a relationship with a, with a vendor with. So, you know, working to solve for that makes a lot of sense. Akash, talk with us a little bit about what patterns you've seen, you know, Stripe, Stripe team has observed about platform payments and how that's impacting what pla what platforms are doing to approach online customers? Yeah, for sure. Um, I would say the, the the most powerful trend that we've observed in, in the industry broadly over the last several years is um, just the verticalization in, um, in software platforms. So, you know, there are now software platforms for kind of every corner of every SMB Every part of the economy um, has, has a software platform serving it. You know, some of my favorites are uh, House Call Pro, which is a, a software platform for um, home service technicians, or MindBody, the software platform for uh, gyms and yoga studios. And you know what? What all of these platforms, or many of these platforms, have have seen as a big opportunity to help their customers is to just sort of deeply integrate payments into the product experience and and. Um, um, process payments on behalf of their users, um, and you know, Connect is sort of the, the core of, of our offering to help do that. And uh, it's just been a really, really fascinating time to, to watch since I've been straight. All right, Akash, what I would love to hear more from you about is why do platforms come to Stripe for modernization? Yeah, you know, we've now been in this space for over a decade. We've helped over 13,000 platforms embed payments in some way. Um, and this is a, a really broad sense of the word platform. You know, um, I, I said earlier that uh, embedded payments opportunities are really everywhere. So we see companies like, uh, you know, Shopify, Lightspeed, House Call Pro, software platforms that integrate payments for their users is, is a big category for us. Marketplaces uh, like Lyft or DoorDash. Um, as well as you know, large enterprises like BMW integrating payments to smooth the experience for their users. So we've had a ton of experience across a, a number of different areas. 
And, you know, we're a very users first company. So over the course of that decade, we've really, you know, sanded down all of the parts of the experience and as much of the friction as possible to make it, you know, as smooth as possible for, for our platforms and of course for their end customers. So that's the first thing is sort of, we've, we've got a lot of experience in this area and, um, and it's, you know, one that's really core to sort of Stripe. Um, second, I would say, you know, one of the things we've learned, as I mentioned, all of these really diverse users is that the needs are, are not one size fits all. So when it comes to embedding payments, we give platforms the ability to invest in the areas that they really want to invest in and offload the rest to Stripe. So, um, you know, if you want to build your own, um, dashboard experience for your merchants and have a really tightly integrated experience, but you want Stripe to handle risk management, you can do that. Uh, or if you want to take control of pricing, but don't want to deal with risk management, uh, again, you, you can do that. Or if you want to um, manage your own risk uh, and, and use Stripe's pre-built dashboards, you can do that. So sort of all of the configurations are, are available for, for our users. Yeah. Um, because again, payments, especially with such a diverse sort of user base of platforms is really not one size fits all. Um, and then third is, you know, we definitely see that our, our customers ambitions extend far beyond just payments and, and more widely out into a broader set of financial services. Um, we offer Stripe Treasury, which allows uh, platforms to, to um, offer sort of financial accounts to their users that they can uh, earn yield with, send money with, um, and even, you know, use a, a, an attached card to, to spend with. Um, and so uh, just like a, a richer suite of, of financial services capabilities is really on the eyes of a lot of the platforms that we talk to and something, you know, Stripe tries, uh, tries to help with, with, with a wide suite of products. It makes perfect sense. I think one of the things that is especially important and attractive today is really just meeting customers where they are. And you you said this, there's not a one size fits all solution and really respecting the fact that everybody's on their own unique journeys. And so being able to use the services, use the capabilities that they need, um, downsize when they don't need, you know, that sort of thing. Those kind of choices and that flexibility, I think, is is what makes a vendor partnership incredibly attractive. And I think that's what customers are looking for. Totally. And I would say it's especially true in, in payments and financial services because there's such a, a wide set of complexity you can engage with or choose to engage with. Um, you know, I think I mentioned earlier that we have... Um, when, when platforms are expanding to new geographies, they have to make some decisions about which local payment methods they want to offer to their merchants. Um, and so we have, offer some tools that allow them to, to give that configurability to their merchants really easily uh, with, with embedded components. And uh, yeah, it's, it, there's just so much depth in this in this space that you know being able to pick and choose can, can really change how efficiently you yeah. can run. I'd say that's a Stripe superpower for sure. <laughs> so why are platforms embracing embedded payments and finance? I mean, it kind of seems like a no-brainer, but let's talk through that. Yeah, I think from my perspective, I think it all stems sort of like Mark mentioned from going to the end customer and working backwards. Um, you know, very often if you're uh, if you're operating a home services business, a you know, HVAC, HVAC business. Um, you use House Call Pro to manage everything, to manage your scheduling, your bookings, your, um, um, you know, your staff schedules. And it's only natural that payments and managing invoicing, collecting, uh, collecting funds from customers would all be part of that experience from the, from the home service professional's perspective. And so House Call Pro, of course, has this, you know, really rich now financial services integration uh, with, with payments and, and other, other financial services from Stripe um, to help make that experience really, really smooth, really tightly integrated, um, and ultimately provide a better, better experience for the home service pro and their end customer. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So Mark, I'm going to throw it to you now. What are some of the industry trends that you're looking ahead to that you think will see sort of shaping the embedded payment experiences that are in near term? Yeah, so building on what Akash mentioned, you know, I think again, whether you're a consumer or small business or enterprise, you want to stay within that one experience, right? It doesn't make sense to bounce out for a payment transaction or bounce out for financing or um, to understand, you know, liquidity. So as much as possible, I think that these these platforms uh, are going to enable this more seamless experience. Uh, and I, I think in the future, what what platforms and payment providers are going to be able to do is um, learn 
right? So not only opening up access to new payment methods uh, or new financing methods or preferred financing methods or, or payment methods, but be able to learn in that experience, right? Payments is chock full of data. Um, so payment providers have a ton of historical and um, alternative data to use to, I think, drive what that next best experience is, right? They can test within the experience to see, you know, which which payment methods are customers um, leaning towards and then which perform better, uh, which are customers more satisfied by, and even more so using AI and ML to predict um, payment methods or experiences that were previously uh, unthought of or that customers don't even know that they want. So I think the uh, the future is is really exciting when it comes to to what's next in embedded uh, embedded payments and financing. Yeah, I think so too. And I think one of the things that's exciting to me, especially as you know, we are in this age of rapidly evolving technology that certainly isn't going to slow down at all. Um, and in fact, of course, we'll speed up more. But I think that what's really interesting to see is that, you know, today we have the ability to develop something, launch it, watch what happens, watch what the customer experiences are, solicit customer feedback, and then tweak it as we go. And I think that's a, you know, that's a huge benefit in something that we weren't able to really do 20 years ago. Um, so that leads me to the next the question I have for you, Mark, is, you know, do we have some examples of, you know, the combination of cloud tech and modern payment systems is really enabling a whole new set of experiences for customers? Do you have any examples of that that we might share? Yeah, so, I mean, more thematically, um, right? So we have a, a whole host of customers and partners on AWS. Um, across the whole spectrum of, of payments, whether it be on the consumer side, the institutional side, um, whether it be ancillary in terms of, you know, buy now, pay later and credit extension or fraud prevention. But yeah. thematically, what we're seeing with our customers and partners is they're using cloud tech, they're using AWS um, because of its low cost structure and ability to not have to predict their success. Um, and over invest in something that they want to try out. We're, we're seeing that enable customers and partners be able to, to test and learn and invest in innovation and try new things, right? If they're able to spin it up, spin up an application, test it out with some customers and understand, you know, whether that's attractive to them uh, and then scale it up really quickly, not having to predict if it's going to be successful, um, really, you know, uh, unlimits their ability to innovate. And um, uh, contrary, if it does succeed, uh, or if it doesn't succeed, they can deprecate that really quickly and not spend a lot of money. Um, so we see our customers and partners being able to use AWS to, um, you know, instill that culture of innovation and not being afraid to, to test and learn. And what that really means is there's just a ton of new product development, right? And we've got customers like Stripe that are not only um, doing really, really well in their core competence, but being able to try new things, whether it be different sectors of the value chain within payments or new value-added services. So um, that's a big part of it. And then, again, we've got customers just like Stripe that are trying to get into new geos, right? And the ability to speed up time to market, go to new places and not have to spin up a uh, data center or staff within a new region, just being able to spin up, um, you know, a virtual environment within AWS um, also enables that kind of um, innovation. And and lastly, I'd say partnership, right? AWS has enabled a lot of customers and partners to find new customers and partners. Um, there's a mindset of focusing on your core competence uh, and for undifferentiated heavy lifting, just finding a partner, somebody that does that really well. Um, and not having to, you know, build that skill set or find that skill set in the market. So the the inclination towards partnership is really thriving right now. Which I think, again, if you don't have to invest in something that is, you know, undifferentiated, you have the capacity to invest in innovation, which is really exciting. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think we've been seeing this for a while now, certainly as it relates to digital transformation it, broadly, you know, the working with partners, trusted vendor partners, creating alliances, that really is the smart path because reinventing the wheel 
every step of the way, it doesn't make sense. And so, like you said, being able to quickly spur adoption at a low cost, um, sometimes in instances, I know that AWS even offers things at no cost, but, um, but being able to let people get in there, play around, quickly deploy things, test and measure, you know, I, I really think that that is, that's the magic. And that's, the, I think, some of the beauty of working with AWS. Um, I want to shift now and talk a little bit about embedded payments for SaaS platforms. Akash, this one I'm throwing your way. Can you walk us through how Stripe is transforming payments for SaaS platforms? Yeah, so like I mentioned a little earlier, you know, um, software platforms inspired by sort of the needs of their users are increasingly bringing payments into the, the core of their experience. Um, and I would say there's like a few, a few things Stripe is doing in this area. You know, we've been in this space for over a decade now. We've helped over 13,000 platforms embed payments in some way. Um, and that's everyone from, you know, we mentioned some vertical SaaS platforms like Pascal Pro or MindBody. Um, and also like large enterprises like, you know, BMW uses Stripe Connect, our main product for software platforms uh, to integrate payments and, you know, manage payments on behalf of, of dealers and consumers. Um, and so I would say that's, you know, a big, a big reason users use choose us, choose us is right. this experience having built up um, a bunch of this product capability over the last last several years. Yeah. Um, an another area where I think we've... Um, We've really kind of observed the, the platform and embedded payments uh, space evolving a lot. Is just that the needs of these customers are, are really not one size fits all. So when it comes to integrating payments, you know, we give platforms the ability to invest in the areas that they really want to invest in and offload the aspects to Stripe that they that they don't. Um, for example, you know, if you don't want to build every single sort of uh, user experience inside of your product because you want to get to market quickly, you can use our embedded components to do that um, to, to sort of save yourself the development time and um, quickly get to market. Um, and then third, I would say like, uh, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of platforms ambitions go beyond just payments. Um, so, you know, I mentioned House Call Pro earlier and, um, you know, they, they now offer a rich suite of financial services to their home service pros. Um, and so sort of no matter what industry you're in, um, platforms and marketplaces sort of have to adapt their business models to these changing expectations of, of their users. Um, and so they can take advantage of, of a whole suite of capabilities from Stripe, you know, global payments like um, um, our optimized checkout suite, the rich set of payment methods, um, other, other capabilities from Stripe, like our, our banking products, like you know, Stripe Treasury, Stripe issuing to issue cards. Um, so, so it's that whole suite of product that, that uh, really make a difference for, for platforms. Awesome. You know, one of the things we talked about a little bit at the beginning of this conversation was just um, the different industries that you're focused on. And, and you know, I know financial services is one of them. Um, there are, let's see, automotive, retail. You talked a little bit about MindBody, the home improvement. Do you have any other customer examples that you're able to share with us? Yeah, one example I'm particularly excited about is uh, there's there's a company called MYOB. There's sort of a horizontal software platform for uh, for for accounting, and they were able to build their integration using Connect in less than eight weeks using all of these embedded components that I mentioned um, and and go live with with this integration. Um, and so, uh, so, like I mentioned, time to market is just a big part of part of what we've tried to help platforms optimize, and uh, uh, that's a great example of of a user getting live really fast. Yeah, and the cool thing is that these solutions span, you know, and, and we talked about this um, at the beginning of the conversation, but it's not just, this is not just enterprise use case. This is across the board solutions for businesses of, of all sizes. And I think that makes it attractive as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there are some challenges. So what are some of the biggest challenges that platforms face when you're looking to embed payments? Yeah, um, I would say look, there are, there are many challenges. It's not a, not easy as much as we try to make it easy. Um, the the first one that that comes to mind is um, geographic expansion. Um, there are a lot of challenges that relate to just sort of local regulations around payments, payments complexities, the different payment methods that are popular in the different um, geographies that a that a customer wants to expand into. And so, um, you know, we've introduced a bunch of capabilities around. Um, uh, our onboarding 
suite that allows a user to you know quickly launch in a new market without having to adapt all of their systems to collect all the right information from from their users. They can simply rely on Stripe to do that correctly. Um, and uh, you know every every geography has its own sort of set of information you need to collect, set of information to verify, and obviously ever ever changing requirements. Um, We've also introduced some new capabilities to make geographic expansion easier, uh, where platforms can now use uh, a pre-built Stripe component for configuring local payment methods. So uh, again, rather than understanding all of the specific requirements of every single payment method that might be popular in a country you're looking to expand to, you can simply use, um, use this uh, pre-built component to do that. That's the first big category is geographic expansion in you know, a regulated space can be really tough. Um, so we, we try to build these tools to, to make that easier. Um, second, like I mentioned, is time to market can be can be significant. So if a user is um, you know looking to integrate payments, really excited about the business opportunity, really excited to solve the use case and the problem for their users, it can take you know and, and historically has taken some users, uh, some platforms, you know, years to to actually get their payments offering up and off the ground. Um, and so we've introduced you know embedded UIs and other capabilities to make it easier to integrate payments, to monetize payments, um, and to uh, sort of operate your payments business. Um, so that's the second second category. Um, the third big one I'll mention is managing risk. Um, you know, when when you're in in a field like payments, you just you have to worry about risk um, and uh, reducing losses for that like your business can incur as a result of you know the businesses who are operating on your platform. Um, and so, how do you make sure that the merchants that you onboard are legitimate? How do you like monitor to make sure that merchants aren't about to go out of business? Um, and so, we've introduced some new tooling that allows platforms to I quickly see like what is the what are the properties of this merchant? How are their disputes trending? What are their refund rates look like? Um, should I be worried about um, about risk here? Uh, and some of the the really powerful elements here is that these take advantage of the wider Stripe network. So, um, you know, if Stripe has seen uh, it sees an account associated with your platform that is using a bank account that was previously rejected for fraud. We'll let you know, and we'll say, "Hey, you might want to consider looking at this account. Uh, we yeah. think we think it might be fraudulent." Um, and so, uh, so those kinds of tools that that enable platforms to kind of operate well. Um, again, trying to help address some of the challenges across uh, across all three of those: geographic expansion, getting new features out the door, time to market, and managing managing risk. So. I hadn't thought about managing risk as a part of this value prop, but it makes perfect sense. So in addition to that, you know, and I think that when people are thinking about, you know, looking to strive for their needs beyond payments, uh, you know, the, the, the ordinary average things are kind of a given, but beyond, okay, so risk management, you threw that into the equation. I wasn't thinking about that. What other reasons would um, would platforms turn to Stripe for needs that that extend well beyond payments? Are there some other things that we're not thinking about? Yeah, well, so there's a lot um, there's a lot under the covers with payments. Um, I think like probably the biggest category that I would mention here is the broader suite of financial services from Stripe. So um, you know, a lot of platforms look to offer their uh, their users a uh, an ability to store funds so they can actually keep the the money that they've earned in in an account and they can you know send money to their suppliers or vendors they can earn yield um, that kind of that kind of thing and again this all goes back to creating the most seamless experience for their users that they can um, so you know Stripe treasury is our is our primary tool to enable that we also offer Stripe issuing which allows you to issue cards uh, on um, on the balances that are held held with Stripe and so uh, we've seen a ton of growth there. Uh, platforms on Stripe have issued over 200 million cards globally now. Um, and so uh, uh, these this wider suite of financial services that the customers of our platforms have started to demand from them um, is also a reason that, that you know, our product suite has grown to, to help enable that. Very cool, very cool. Okay, I want to talk a little bit now about reliability and performance and Mark, I'm going to turn to you. So talk with us a little bit about why payments, reliability, and performance is so incredibly uh, critical to platforms and organizations that want to build them. Yeah, so reliability, uh, resiliency, uh, security, they are paramount when I talk to our payment customers. And uh, yeah. more importantly, it's paramount to them when they talk about their and, and customers. Uh, you know, it's all around trust. 
and trust is uh, earned in drops and lost in buckets. And if, whether you're a consumer or small business or a large enterprise, uh, if you have a challenge with a with a, a payment method or failure, um, it, it you have other options. And if you lose confidence in that that payment vehicle, uh, you're less likely to try it. Uh, and if you have a couple of bad experiences, you're really not likely to to try that. So um, earning and retaining that trust is uh, is critical. And so what that means for the customers we talk to is just building in a really resilient um, and scalable way. So our customers um, are constantly working with us and our solution architects to to look at their architecture and going through well architected reviews and going through well architected reviews with a financial lens. Uh, as well as, like Akash mentioned, making sure they're conforming to um, regulations and local regulations as well. Um, so there's the trust component of that, and then there's just the expectation component. Um, we've all just been conditioned at this point to expect um, very fast, very secure payments. Um, again, whether you're a consumer or your your business, so the the expectations are really high. Um, and that doesn't mean that the the customer experience necessarily, um, you know, it, it, it drives most of that. It's really the underbelly. It's you know, what is the the platform and the application um, built to um, withstand um, to ensure that those expectations are met. So uh, most of my conversations when they when they um, go towards modernization, they quickly then go towards like, okay, well, how are we going to build this modern platform? again, in a reliable, resilient, and conformant way. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I am going to go on record as saying that I love this little, these little um, gems of brilliance here. Trust is earned in drops and lost in buckets. I'm stealing it and forevermore going to use that because it's perfect. I can't tell. I can't say it's an original. I'm pretty sure I saw that in a movie somewhere, but uh, oh. it, it, it hit home with me. All right. Well, you stole it from somebody else and then, then it's all then it's your game, pride. right? But no, I think that's perfect. And I think that, you know, listening to a conversation like this as a, as a, both a business person, as a consumer, I think all of us can't help but think about our experiences. And the reality of it is it just takes one experience um, that you're walking through as a customer and, you know, and, and a vendor not delivering. And the reality of today's customers is that we know there's a better way. And we know we can find a better way and we're not going to stick around and wait for you to have, get it all figured out. You know what I'm saying? And, and really, I think that the experience that you serve up and how quick and efficient and secure it feels, it, you know, that sets the stage for, you know, an ongoing relationship, deepening customer loyalty, all of those, you know, customer satisfaction, happy customers tell other customers, you know, all of those things. It's just these little details play such an important role in the experiences that we provide for customers. And it it has everything to do with business success. Yeah, it's a big part of customer obsession. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. As we get ready to wrap this conversation, I want to talk for a minute about infrastructure, which of course plays a huge role in both reliability and performance. Akash, I'd love to hear more from you about how Stripe is focusing on building infrastructure that ensures this high level of reliability, of reliability and performance. Yeah, we uh, you know we have a long history of doing this at sort of the biggest spikes in volume, Prime Day, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, um, and we work with some of the biggest e-commerce platforms out there. And so that's given us sort of best practices and an organizational culture um, where we we just put reliability really at the fore of everything we do. Um, and that includes Amazon as a customer um, who we support under our, our broader partnership. Um, and you know, reliability is a team sport. Reliability is, re reliability is really critical to. Um, uh, the payments experience, you know, if you imagine being a customer and running a payment and uh, uh, the frustration associated with a failed payment, you know, that's amplified even further when you consider the business merchant working with. Um, and so running on AWS is really critical for supporting that kind of demand from our, from our users. And so Stripe broadly now is at five and a half nines of reliability um, and supporting a customer like Amazon as well uh, at their peak volumes um, on these, on these big uh, sales events. Uh, takes a, a big commitment from us as well. 
you know, that I think about the peak volumes that a company like Amazon has. And I don't know anybody, I don't know any company in the world that might have greater peak volumes than Amazon has. So I think that's a good indicator of, of, you know, the reality. I love that. I love the sentiment that this is a team sport, right? And we, we make it happen by working with amazing partners. And, and I think that that's exactly what we wanted to talk about today. <laughs> well, gentlemen, Mark Smith from AWS and Akash Sani from Stripe, thank you so much for joining us today. To our audience, you're listening to The Cube, the place to go for enterprise tech news and insights. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you here again soon.